Hey, want to show your love for anime and heavy metal while looking stylish and simultaneously supporting the channel? Then be sure to grab yourself one of these awesome shirts from my merch store, which you will find linked in the description. Also be sure to send me a pic of yourself wearing one of these shirts and you'll get a shout out in a future video. Offer ends October 15th, 2018, so get yours now while it's hot. This week is a good, no, great week for metal music. At the time of this recording, several more albums have dropped and I intend to include them on the next episode along with whatever else I might discover between now and then. But the albums I've been listening to all week have been some of the best material that I have listened to for months now. Today I shall be presenting to you my fellow music lovers. Bands from a variety of genres and subgenres, along with one that might just take you by surprise. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the second episode of New Metal Releases to check out. Roll the intro. those bands whose name you'll hear crop up often in conversation and whose logo you will see on the shirts of most other death metal and deathcore musicians in music videos. So while I was aware of them for some time, this album is actually my first time experiencing their music and I've got to say, I was rather impressed. Look, I realise I'm probably not the most qualified person talk about this band is seen as uh, for long time fans this is either a masterpiece or one of the worst albums to date depending on your experience but for a first time listen I actually asked myself why I hadn't checked this band out sooner. While listening to this record I could definitely pick up elements from some of the bands that influenced their style and I could also put into perspective where a lot of deathcore bands like Whitechapel or Carnifex get their songwriting styles from. The album is a pure adrenaline fueled listening experience that doesn't bother to slow down for even a second and considering that this genre isn't something like prog, I was actually okay with that. Normally when listening to an album I prefer a band to have more variety and showcase more than just one aspect of their music. But seeing as this album is meant to be just about raw power and sheer brutality, I found this album to be a fun and energetic listen. Their music is fast, heavy, pounding, brutal and surprisingly technical in a lot of ways. The vocals were decent and the guitar work was captivating and the drumming was nothing short of excellent. I must admit that I found the overall sound and production a little odd at first, but the more I listened to this album, the quicker I got used to it. By then it actually reminded me a lot of Miseration's later albums, and it immediately stuck with me since then. Simply put, this album is pure death metal, and I love every minute of it. If you're looking for some fast, heavy and intense music to watch to, then I suggest you check out this album as soon as possible. Links can be found in the description. I would recommend this album to fans of Cannibal Corpse, Miseration, Carnifex and Slaughter to Prevail. So this album is also another first time experience. 
This band is apparently a side project of Mark Jensen, the growly vocalist and guitarist of Dutch symphonic metal supergroup Epica. After doing some research, aside from the three founding members of this project, all other members appear to be guests or session members only. And on this album there are a lot of people involved, and that includes the entire Prague Philharmonic Orchestra, who have worked with many metal bands in the past, including names like Dimu Borgir, Devon Townsend Project, Blind Guardian, Within Temptation, and Septic Flesh. Anyways, this album is basically very much like an Epica album, but with a bit more experimentation. While the overall songwriting and sound is very much rooted in Janssen's Epica style, he does like to play around with the sound a little bit more here and there by adding elements from other metal genres, and the opera elements are a little more unhinged than what they are in his usual style of work with Epica. What I really liked about this album was just how much variety there was from the four vocalists. Four vocalists who participated in the recording of this album and just how incredible their delivery was. While I'm not familiar with most of the names that were listed aside from Jensen himself, all I can say is that I was most certainly impressed. Another thing I should mention is that despite its strong similarities to Epica, it does seem to find that balance between classical music and of course the bombastic movie soundtrack elements. The mixing and production is almost flawless, although I'd say this project still has ways to go in comparison to other symphonic death metal bands like Septic Flesh or Flesh God Apocalypse. The Prague Philharmonic Orchestra are amazing as usual, and on their second disc you really get the chance to appreciate what they have contributed to this album a little more since they are all instrumental versions of the tracks. This is definitely a must listen for all you classical nerds out there, and the relative links can be found in the description box if you are interested in checking it out. I would recommend this album to fans of Epica, Delane, Camelot, Fish God Apocalypse, and Septic Flesh. Now, out of all the records on this list, I would have to say that this one is my absolute favourite, as it reminded me of all the things I love about groove metal, metalcore, and melodic death metal. I was completely blown away by many things from this album. For starters, the vocals are absolutely killer. They are crisp, precise, and strike with sheer power and aggression. They also reminded me a lot of Randy Blythe's vocals back in the days of Ashes of the Wake and I simply could not get enough of them. Secondly, the guitar solos. Oh man, the guitar solos on this record are truly some of the best I have heard in a while in this particular genre. They are soaring and uplifting and reminded me a lot of the solos of some of my favourite bands from bands like Rise to Fall, Bloodstained Child, and Scar Symmetry using their music, especially that solo on Suffer My Hand. Just super fucking tasty stuff. There are also plenty of breakdowns and other metalcore elements throughout, which is another plus, and the drumming is balanced and doesn't just use one tempo or only double kicks and really showcases the fact that the band aren't here to give you an album of songs that all have the same feel, thus falling into the trap of blending in together and leaving the listener unable to determine when one track ends and another one begins. Each song feels unique while still retaining its consistency and it's simply a perfect listen. The final thing I want to touch on is the mixing and the production. For a band that is only just starting out, this album doesn't sound like it was mixed in a home studio on a limited budget. Just from the first couple of notes on the first song, I was totally taken aback. 
If I was someone who was totally new to metal, I would have thought these guys were one of the bigger names in the more modern metal scene and have been around forever, all based on the level of production alone. The distortion on the guitars is perfect. The drums sound great as opposed to the usual plastic tin sound that most modern metal albums have, and the vocals are at the right pitch and neither overpower the instruments or fade into the background. I cannot tell you how much a well-produced album makes a difference in quality for the music and general impression of a new and upcoming band. And Central Disorder definitely delivered on the goods. This album is a must listen and you can listen to it or purchase it now by following the links in the description box down below. Do it now. I would recommend this album to fans of Lamb of God, Kill Switch Engage, In Flames, and Rise to Fall. So, it's been quite some time since I've listened to a good atmospheric black metal album, and this one was quite different to what I have come to expect from this style of metal. Instead of being the usual synth-based and hypnotic and repetitive style that we're used to hearing from the genre, this band incorporates a lot more subtle progressive elements to the songwriting and let the synths play a more subtle role in building a dark and foreboding atmosphere instead of having them be in the forefront with the guitars as just static distortion. The album also has a much higher production value than your average black metal record. The guitars are crisp, the drumming doesn't sound soft and roomy like the usual black metal drum mix, and of course the vocals are clear and audible. However, this doesn't mean that the album does not sound good. If anything, it sounds great, and it still manages to capture the spirit of Black Metal's raw soundscape perfectly. I definitely got some Mirror Throne and Agaloch elements in the songwriting and overall melodies in the way some tracks were arranged and the synths were very reminiscent of projects like Burzum, Lustier and Eldemar. Despite its more proggy approach to the songwriting, the album is still a captivating and relaxing listen and is still able to give you that same hypnotic effect while simultaneously not having to be repetitive in order to do so. The guitar solos were also fantastic and I love the feeling of tranquility they provided as a nice break up between the mostly dark aspects of the music. If you're looking for something to fill in the void of the Mirror Throne and Agaloc, then this is the album for you. Links on the description if you are interested in checking this album out. I would recommend this album to fans of Burzum, Dark Throne, Agaloch, Mirror Throne, Eldemar, and Lustair. What can I say? It's deathcore. Sure, on the surface it seems like a typical generic release, but what I loved about this album was how it perfectly mixed the blackened sound of Lorna Shaw with the speed and technicality of Infant's Annihilator and the slam style of Silence of the Swarm. Look, this album might not be blackened deathcore in the way I'm used to hearing it, but it's eerie and heavy enough to earn the label in my eyes. This EP is exceptionally heavy and brutal and is a non-stop power ride through to the last track. And even though it's deathcore, it actually manages to slip in guitar solos, which is something you don't see often in this genre. And when you do it tends to be rather short-lived. This EP also features guest vocals from the likes of Dan Watson, who is the original vocalist of Infant Annihilator and the current vocalist of Enterprise Earth 
and Tom Barber, who is the original vocalist of Lorne Shaw and the current vocalist for Chelsea Grin. And both of them deliver excellent performances as usual. The production value of this album is superb and it's just an overall fun listen. The EP is a short, sweet and brutal listen that is definitely worth your time. You can listen to it by following the links in the description box down below. I would recommend this EP to fans of Infant Annihilator, Lorna Shaw and Signs of the Swarm. Our second last album of the day is none other than the long-awaited third album from the symphonic blackened thrash metal band, Dragonlord, which compromises of members of Testament and Nevermore. Now, while I have listened to a few songs here and there from their previous two albums, I cannot say I was exactly a fan of their music. Something about their overall sound just didn't quite do it for me. Probably because I had heard better symphonic black metal acts prior to listening to them with acts like Emperor, Dimu Borgir, Karak Angren, and others. So initially I dismissed this band and I had no further desire to check out their music. However, while browsing through the list of latest metal releases, I saw their name and had seen the music video for their single, Northlanders, being recommended to me in my YouTube feed. While the music video itself is <laughs> extremely campy and cheesy, I found the actual song to be rather great, and that is what persuaded me to go and give this album a chance. I think what really surprised me about this record was how much it reminded me of Cradle of Filth sound, albeit with a more thrash metal influence rather than the gothic metal aspect. Then again, Cradle are listed as an associated act with them, so there's that. Anyways, this is an album that basically takes what Cradle of Filth does and adds more thrash metal inspired songwriting to it and has less off-putting vocals. Sorry Danny, but even I can only tolerate your banshee wails for so many songs at a time before wanting to change to another band. The vocals on this record are pretty strong. They have a nice blend of the rough vocals you can get from thrash metal music and traditional black metal vocals. The female vocals, which are performed by a vocalist named Leia McHenry, are hauntingly beautiful and just everything about this is epic and awesome. This album has speed, atmosphere and all around epicness that is just an overall treat to the ears. It has plenty of tasty riffs and solos, atmospheric keyboard synths, great songwriting, amazing production value and all around epic performances. This album was definitely worth 13 years of wait for those of you who are longtime fans of the project and I suggest you check it out right now by visiting the links in the description box. I would recommend this album to fans of Testament, Cradle of Filth, Dimu Borger and Havoc. Last and most certainly not least is an album I have been waiting for so long to be released. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this Venezuelan DJ who has made quite the name for himself in both the metal and electronic music scenes, Zardonic is a musician who is taking the metal genre to new heights and will most likely have a major impact on the next generation of bands once music starts going full electronic. Essentially, Zardonic's music can be described as bass metal, the fusion between heavy and hardcore drum and bass music 
with a variety of metal influences ranging anywhere between industrial metal to black metal. Once again, Zardonic has pulled off yet another fantastic record. I was initially worried a few months back where in a Facebook live stream he stated that he was going to be pulling back a little on the metal sound with this album and that it wouldn't be the same as 2015's Antihero which all metalheads and electronic music lovers should check out as well by the way and focus more on the D&B side. After listening to this record I can say that my fears completely melted away as even though the metal side has been toned down somewhat it still carries the heaviness, aggression, energy and spirit of metal within each track. The album is exactly 47 minutes long and the production value as usual fucking knocks it out of the park. Zardonic's sound is all about the tone and his music can be played at any volume at any kind of venue or concert. Need some pumping tracks at the local nightclub? Boom! Sounds great. Opening act for a headlining band of Bucken? Still sounds great. This is why, despite the fact that there are plenty of artists who are heavier than him in the electronic music scene, I still pick his music over others. Music should be about tone, and that is what Zardonic is all about. The album also features many guests, such as The Chemists, American Grimm, Malk, Cell Dweller, and many others. Plus it's a lot more experimental than Antihero was by incorporating elements of genres like hip hop, retro wave, neurofunk, and others. I simply cannot recommend this album enough. If you love metal and you are interested in exploring something that is new and different, then you can find the relative links down in the description box below. I would recommend this album to anyone who is a fan of Nine Inch Nails, Pendulum, Cell Dweller, Blue Stully, and Rammstein. Thank you all for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video and discovered something to your liking. Let me know what albums you liked down in the comments below. If you like what it is that I do here and you'd like to help me produce some more content and better, more high quality videos, then you could give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, turn those notifications on, and share my videos with your friends. You can also help me out by donating to my monthly Patreon and if you would like to see more content and updates along with some news and memes then you can follow me on my relative social media links which are also of course linked in the description box below. Take care of yourselves everyone and until the next video, have a kick ass day. Cheers.